Hello, everyone, and welcome back to MC310. This is week two, and we're going to be discussing branding and how it affects how we plan our designs for different brands and companies. Now, when you think about a brand, you may be thinking about large companies like Disney or Dove, McDonald's, Google, but actually all projects have a brand. It doesn't really matter the size of the company. It doesn't matter the size of the event. It doesn't matter if you're selling, recruiting, informing. You could be a journalist. You could be an advertiser. You could be in public relations. It doesn't even matter if you're an individual or a company. Everything that is communicated really has a brand and a brand really just means that when you communicate something out, people know who it comes from. They know the organization, they know the event that it's about. Now, again, brands need to be thought out. They need to be planned and designed. And yet a lot of times brands aren't considered particularly for small businesses and even for individuals. As you're going out on the job market after graduation, you need to think about what your personal brand is. What kind of brand have you built on your social media channels, your portfolios and things like that? We will be discussing that at the back end of the semester, but it's important for you to think about it now as well. What do you want your brand to be as an individual? Even our own beloved Montevallo has a brand. Uh, even our Department of Communication has its own brand within the branding of the University of Montevallo. Everything truly has a brand. So what is a brand? Well, it's just generally a set of characteristics that helps an audience differentiate a business product, service, or project from its competitors. So the word brand actually comes from an old farming practice where farmers would poke uh, cattle with a hot metal piece and it would leave a brand, a mark on the cattle um, in order to tell other farmers and other ranchers who that piece of cattle belonged to. And it was a form of communicating your property, your message, your uh, project uh, to others. And so that's really where the idea of branding comes from, that without uh, even saying anything, the characteristics of your brand could help an audience identify your company and who is communicating uh, without ever having to say who it is. And so when you're creating a brand and designing within a brand, the first step you need to think about when you're starting a design project is what is that project's objectives? What are its goals? What are its aims? What is the purpose? Um, so you really need to know the why before you start any kind of design, because what you answer with your why and what your objectives are will really help determine some of the design aspects that you use. Typically, you're going to have multiple uh, goals and aims within your project. So it's important to prioritize them by writing them down and ranking them in order of importance. Once you get your objectives, you really need to write down specific goals. And what I mean by specific is SMART goals. This is a acronym that we use to say specific goals, uh, ones that are narrow and effective for planning, measurable, where you can actually evaluate when you are meeting that goal or not. So instead of saying you want to grow your audience, you would say, I want to grow my audience by 5%. You want to make sure that it's attainable. Can you really do it within the time frame that you're giving yourself? It needs to be relevant to your organization, your values and longer objectives. So knowing that uh, the goal is important to your company or your individual overall. And then time-based, they need to have an end date so that you say, if I'm going to grow my audience by 5%, I'm going to do it within six months or a year. So that when that mark hits, when that time-based mark hits, you can say, I did it or I didn't do it and reevaluate the project. So the first start step of every project is to set up goals and think through your project. Once you do that, you're going to write what's called a brief. Uh, this is 
is most common in public relations, marketing, and advertising. We don't do this as much in journalism, but it's helpful even in journalism to think about what is your brief statement as to why this project, this article, this story is important. You may not even write it down, but just knowing it in your head is really important. Now, formal briefs are part of the public relations, marketing, and advertising process, so it's important that you know what a brief looks like. I've included a Reebok brief here. And what you do is once you've thought through the questions of your objectives and your aims, you're going to then write it all down so you can share it with your client and other employees who are working on the project so you can show what those objectives are and how you plan to meet them. And it allows you to refer back to that throughout the project as you're creating design decisions. So once you have created your brief and kind of answered that why question, then you need to conduct an audit on yourself and your competitors. When you're evaluating yourself, you need to evaluate all of the forms of communications that you have. This could be your social media profile, your website, uh, how you talk to the media, maybe your advertising, uh, how you communicate with customers or, uh, you know, any direct contact that you have with sellers uh, or even sources if you're a journalist. So you really need to evaluate kind of what you are doing. Um, in all types of communication. And not only are you considering your verbal style, meaning like how you would describe yourself, your tone, you know, the kind of words that you use, are you really formal? Or are you lighthearted and friendly? And um, those are decisions that you kind of have to think through as you evaluate and audit your own communication, then consider the visual style. You need to know, like, do we have a specific logo that we need to use? Fonts, color palettes, imagery, your layouts, you know, how are all of these things coming together to create the visual style for a brand? And that really is a large chunk of what design and layout is all about, the visual design of a brand, but it has to be combined with that verbal branding as well. So audit, auditing it and evaluating it um, needs to happen in order for you to effectively design in the future. You also need to see like what elements are consistent, what are we not doing consistently, and overall, how do you rate yourself? And you can rate yourself through a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis can be used uh, for many different purposes. It identifies the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, to your brand and organization. And it's important that you go through these and think through these. In fact, this is what your discussion board will be about. Um, so evaluating uh, yourself in an audit is an important part of uh, design and uh, thinking through a project. Now, when you're going through the design process, you're not only evaluating yourself, but you also need to look at those businesses or uh, competitors who are around you. What are those people doing well that you're not doing? What do you do that they don't do? And that makes you unique and therefore should be communicated as a unique part of your brand. So you need to evaluate and conduct a SWOT analysis for your competitors as well. Now, once you've done that, you can map the market. This is a term that we use frequently in PR, uh, marketing and advertising, that allows us to understand where our place in the market is when we're talking about certain qualities of our product. For example, if we're talking about candy, you could use quality of the product, like how it tastes versus its cost, and put those on horizontal and vertical axes. And when you do, it shows you kind of where those gaps in the market are. So obviously you wouldn't want um, to have a product that was low quality and high price. No one's going to pay for that, right? Instead, you can see that there's a gap in the market above Mars in high quality, low price products. So knowing that your company could fill that gap could be an important part of mapping the market. It can also help you determine like Let's say, for instance, your M&Ms, well, you're low price, low quality. You're not going to talk about being low quality, but that tells you, hey, I really need to talk about being the lowest price in the market. So having a, a marketing map or a market map allows you to understand different techniques of branding and design. 
a mind map will also do the same. So you're going to go through and ask yourself a bunch of questions and then come up with the main values and the main keywords that you identify as important to your project and your design. So here's an example of a mind map for McDonald's, which I'm realizing um, has pixelated. I apologize for that, but uh, it's somewhat easy to see that you have McDonald's here in the center um, and you have their golden arches, you know, which they're known for in their uh, branding. Then you have the value um, of the product. So that's something that they think is important, right? And so they're going to get value from their pricing, their portions and their promotions, but they also want to connect value with the types of meals that they have. So they talk about the products that they serve, their brands like the Big Mac or Egg McMuffin, the quality of those meals. But then you also have other values like fun, kids, families. So Ronald McDonald being part of that brand that builds up the value of fun and family oriented, having playgrounds, birthday parties, etc. So I think um, having a mind map allows you to see um, visually everything that your company is doing. Now here's a mind map for, uh, Starbucks that also combines, you know, the SWOT analysis where you're talking about strong association, medium association, and weak association with the values. And this often comes from, uh, the research that you do and understanding, uh, kind of where you are in the market. So you can see that they are brand leader. They're very strongly known for coffee. They're strongly known as a coffee place and for their atmosphere, but maybe they're weaker in terms of being known for service. So if they really want to build up service, then they know they need to communicate that more within their brand. So I talked about being able to create that kind of mind map through, uh, different types of market research. Now, market research is not limited to professors, faculty, professional scientific researchers. In fact, research is a very important part of advertising, public relations, and marketing. It's also becoming an increasingly important part of journalism as well. And so conducting primary and secondary research is something you should be familiar with. Um, and if you're not, I highly suggest you take one of our Com Studies courses in research to help you gain these skills. Primary research is the kind that you do specifically about your company. It's one that you or your company conducts and you can tailor the questions and the types of uh, design that you're looking for specifically to your target audience. And the great part about that is you're going to get the feedback that you need, but it's very costly and it can be uh, very uh, time consuming to do primary research. You could also do secondary research, which involves applying, um, the work of other studies or uh, other analytic numbers uh, to your situation. So for example, if I were trying to find out um, more about my target audience for Vision News at the University of Montevallo, I could use the demographic information that the university has pulled on our students to inform you know, who my target audience is for Vision News. So that would be a, an example of a use of secondary research. And the great part about it is it's free or low cost, but the results are not specific to your brand. So when we're talking about primary research, there are two different types of primary research. The first is quantitative. This is research that involves numbers. These are gathered through things like surveys, analytics, experiments, and content analyses. And the main idea is that you're showing numbers to prove uh, data and prove trends in the market. So for example, you can say, you know, I had 2000 followers in February. Now we have 4,000 followers in May. That means we've seen a growth of 3000 followers. Now those numbers should be attached to specific meaning. This means we've grown our audience. This means we have a higher reach for all of our other social media analytics. So this would be an example of using numbers to gain quantitative research. 
You can also use qualitative research, which really gets at the idea of finding the thoughts and opinions of your audience. So you can do interviews with individual people who you either want to be in your target audience or who are already in your target audience to better understand things about your design and your brand. You can focus group. So for example, when large companies decide to create a logo, they often bring a bunch of people in a room together and they show them different designs and listen to the focus groups about what they think about the product and the logo and the design to get feedback on it before they ever release it to the public. You may use ethnographic research such as eye tracking to see how people are using your uh, product, your brand and responding to it. So there are many different ways to get qualitative research uh, that gives you the thoughts and opinions of your audience before you actually design anything. And so you can also conduct secondary research by identifying what you need to know, finding sources of that information, uh, collecting it and cleaning that data set, combining it and comparing it, and then analyzing the data so that you draw trends or information from that can help you determine your audience and determine what kind of design that they would respond to. And so then you would analyze your data um, and understanding who your audience is and who you're really targeting through your designs and through your brand. And so a common practice in marketing, advertising, and PR, when you're doing design and using this research to create audience analysis is to create what's called an audience profile, where you actually create a person based on the information that you've gained from your research. So that every time you're designing something, you have marketing Maria in mind. For example, you see that, um, she has a remote work life. Uh, work schedule and favors flexibility. She enjoys using new social media apps. And so if you were designing something for her, you would want it to look pretty trendy. You might want to make it look and uh, react like an app would. So when you're thinking about how she would use your design, you want it to feel like that. You want uh, to talk to her about her remote work schedule, you know, uh, in the ways that you communicate your brand and how your product can help you with that. You also know that you need to prioritize Instagram because that's what Marketing Maria uses most. Now, again, Marketing Maria isn't a real person, but when we are designing, it helps to keep someone in mind through these audience profiles. So you can say like, would Marketing Maria really like? this and it helps you think through your audience analysis and whether or not you're meeting your objectives and your goals. So that's the basis of the design process, knowing your why, creating a brief that you can use throughout the design, doing a self audit, a competitor audit, creating a marketing map and a mind map, and then researching your audience to really understand your brand. Now, a lot of times when you're working for a company, all of this is going to have already happened. That doesn't mean you don't need to do it yourself. In fact, whenever uh, I started a new job in communication, one of the first thing I would do is go through this type of audit to really understand my business, to understand my employer so that I knew how to communicate on their behalf. And this was true in news too. You kind of want to know their voice, their brand, what they stand for, their values. So doing this type of research right at the beginning is really important for any new job, but it's also cyclical. You're always going to start this with a new project. Every new project should start with this design process in mind, and then you need to continue to evaluate it throughout the design so that you know that you're meeting your goals and objectives. So that is how you design and plan um, a project uh, before you ever do a single bit of designing or layout. Make sure that you watch video two for this week about how you can make a brand and then uh, fill out your discussion post for uh, branding. Make sure that you read the type chapters. I have only included three parts. I decided to cut one of the parts uh, for your reading. I know three chapters seems like a lot, but if you did your branding reading, you know that these are pretty short chapters. They're very visual to help you uh, focus on the design and the layout 
layout. So it should go very quickly. Um, but these are important readings for you to really get the basis and foundation of design. So make sure that you are doing your readings each week. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in video two.